Welcome back, Tributes, to episode 41 of Into the Arena. I'm Holly. And I'm Emily. And today we're going right back to the beginnings, our humble beginnings, by doing a Enneagram test. Our second episode we ever did was a personality episode, like a personality test episode. So we're going back. Back to our I'm roots. So excited. <laughs> I, I hope that after 40 something episodes, we're a little bit better than we were episode two. So this is kind of like. This episode is not going to be an hour and a half. That's, oh that's what I know. <laughs> Wasn't it like, I think when we recorded it, it was over two hours too. Something like so, that. We were very green. We were naive. We're going to limit our characters. Um, but before we dive into this week's episode, we have very exciting announcements, not really pertaining to us, but more so tomorrow is the day that ballad filming begins officially. I, so, I can't even believe that, but it's exciting to think, okay, we're in the season, hopefully getting leaked set pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also exciting because I don't know, like we've been seeing different cast members like posting from Europe the last few yes. days so that's been kind mm-hmm. of exciting I'm like, like there it's <laughs> starting it's happening yes so it's not a drill anymore but then also tomorrow even more exciting we have tribute talk so join us and our amazing beautiful lovely friends at 6 p.m pacific 9 p.m eastern time we just talk everything and a lot of casting announcements probably Snow's so. hair, I'm sure, will be on the oh, agenda. Yes, <laughs> M&M. <laughs> so yes, join us tomorrow for that. And let's just dive right in. So we're talking about the Enneagram. The first personality test with our characters was the Myers-Briggs. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is different. I guess like a brief overview. There's nine different types. I like the Enneagram. It's, it's different from Myers-Briggs. And that I feel like it's more focused on, are you growing as a person or are you kind of regressing into certain characteristics? <laughs> like, are yeah. you more kind of healthy or an unhealthy type? And I feel like it's more of a way of looking at yourself and figuring out how you could change for the Yeah, future. You can call yourself out by reading through these traits and be like, oh, I think I'm a healthy individual, but just kidding, I'm very unhealthy because secretly I'm tearing apart everyone around me sort of thing so (laughs) you have different opinions too than us like totally valid (laughs) we're not Mm -hmm. like the end-all be-all of the Enneagram yes any means so um type one is the reformer also kind of known as the perfectionist and their core desire is to be a good person have integrity their core like fear would kind of just be the opposite of that would be to be a bad person to be considered evil not have integrity some of their positive traits are that they're very orderly ethical they can be very self-controlled and negative traits they can be judgmental intolerant and aggressive that is type one (laughs) okay type two is the helper also known as the giver core desire is to be needed and probably their biggest fear would be not mattering to other people different positive traits that include being compassionate and caring however their negative traits include being manipulative selfish needy and even possessive so uh (laughs) uh-oh it's like it's like let me care about people but then also like a little bit too much Mm -hmm. type three is the achiever their core desire is to be validated their core fear is to be insignificant or worthless and some of their positive traits are being really confident ambitious charming and hardworking. but some of their negative traits can be being self-centered boastful and vain i think also workaholics is something that's come up as a negative for type three Mm mm-hmm Type four is the individualist or the artist. Um, Their core desire is to demonstrate that they're unique slash special. So talking about myself here, (laughs) (laughs) their core fear is having no identity. Um, Positive traits include being perceptive, imaginative, passionate, and then negative traits. They can be narcissistic and a little bit dramatic, but I don't know. Maybe that's just me. (laughs) (laughs) type five the investigator or the thinker 
their core desire is to understand the world. I forgot to look up their core fear. Do you know what the core fear is of the thinker? They can never fully, like they'll never know everything that they need Mm. to know. Like Mm. they're not going to be prepared. Yeah. Wow, man. Just accept it. (laughs) (laughs) Type fives. (laughs) Some of their positive traits, they're very analytical. Uh, inventive and independent some of their negative traits they can be delusional cynical and oh. unsociable so, did you say fun. this is you cynical <laughs> no this is not me I'm not a type five <laughs> I thought you were okay number six is That's the loyalist me. oh the loyalist or the skeptic fair um the core desire is to have security all oh. core fear is being abandoned or a lack of support Um, Their positive traits include being likable, trustworthy, loyal, and responsible. Emily is very responsible. If you haven't noticed, she runs this whole thing. (laughs) I mean, I'm late all the time. So (laughs) is punctual responsible? I know. (laughs) And negative traits include fearful, self-doubting, and aggressive. You're very aggressive, obviously. (laughs) No, when I I want what I want. Okay. (laughs) Maybe I can be. (laughs) Type seven is the enthusiast. Their core desire is to get the most out of everything in life. Their core fear is being deprived of things. Their positive traits are they are quick learners, are really curious, bold, and unashamed. And negative traits can be that they are overindulgent and impulsive. Mm. Type eight, the challenger. Their core desire is to be in control. And obviously, their biggest fear is to be controlled by someone else like the opposite (laughs) (laughs) it's giving me divergent vibes here um positive (laughs) traits they're energetic strong-willed bold and independent and then their negative traits they're domineering argumentative unfeeling and quite isolated the last one type nine is the peacemaker so their core desire is to be in harmony and their core fear is conflict and disconnection Some of their positive traits, they can be really easygoing, reassuring, and unselfish, but their negative traits, they can be apathetic, irresponsible, and indecisive. Mm -hmm. So now that we have a a good idea of... (laughs) It's like the quick and dirty. (laughs) Well, yeah, because I mean, the research that you have to have to like go into this, I mean... I fully don't understand all the different Myers-Briggs personality types, because how are you supposed to know every single one? Mm -hmm. But even though there's only nine of these, like they're very, very intense. Like you said that there's like the fears and then the core values and the, and like the healthy health levels of, are you? Mm -hmm. There's like the health levels. I feel like there's different ways that they uh, like approach things even within the types. And then there's also wings. So like if you're an eight, (laughs) you can wing to one number or the other on either side. So you can be like an eight wing nine, or you can be an eight wing seven. And it's like for every number. So there's really more than just nine. Nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's a little overwhelming. But as we were talking through them, obviously you heard I, my um, Enneagram type is type four. I don't think I am a wing anything. Oh, I am. I'm a four wing five. But I don't know if that's like legitimate. Like I took that quiz years ago so I kind of just identify as four I haven't looked it up in a while like I I didn't do much research on like myself or anything (laughs) (laughs) looking these up but I I feel like I probably used to be a six wing five like leaning more towards the thinker and now I'm a six wing seven like the enthusiast Mm -hmm. see I think that's interesting because again these personality types are things that can change and as you grow up and as you change when I read that I was a four wing five I was like no I think I'm just a four I think like reading through the fours I was like this is exactly how I feel on an everyday basis so I feel like my thirst for knowledge is not (laughs) it's not what it used to be when I was a child and like you know the world was my oyster (laughs) now I'm just like how do I combat being a sloth oh my gosh (laughs) well I guess there's Here's something that I found interesting is because the Enneagram test is like pretty close in relation to like the Christian faith. I don't know if you know that, like a lot of people Mm. within that religion. Yeah, I guess I've I've seen that. 
Yeah, and so they also, for each number, it has a, a deadly sin associated with it. So like, for example, type four <laughs> is envy. So like, I would, that's like my- oh, what, is, what is type six? Type six is fear. So like- yeah okay I have I operate uh, with a lot of fear (laughs) same but as I was reading that I thought that was really interesting um, because the book that I was reading through I used obviously a lot of sources online but the one that I was reading The Road Back to You by Kron and Stable Stable is like rooted in the Christian faith so that's why it has like that balance these personality tests can get into little pieces of absolutely anything and everything which is why it makes it fun to not only like have us decide like what we think characters personality types are but also like to hear and compare what other people see because again not everyone's going to be like oh yeah Lucy Gray is a blank or Katniss is a blank so we did post on Instagram the six characters that we're going to talk about so we're going to talk about Katniss, Peeta, and Gail from the original trilogy and then Snow, Lucy Gray, and Sejanus from Ballad. It's probably all we're going to have time to talk about. I know. (laughs) Whereas like last time. (laughs) Um, So we asked our Instagram followers, you guys, what you thought each character was. And I kind of put that together in a little chart. So I will pull that up and we'll start with Katniss, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Oh, look at you. I love All right, this. data analyst. <laughs> so okay. we definitely had the most, the most popular choice for Katniss was eight, the challenger. And then it was kind of, there wasn't really a second place. There was kind of like two, three people for, who had chosen the other types. So I feel like it's a, a pretty clear eight from everyone who submitted overall. What did you choose for Katniss? Ooh, I chose an eight. I chose eight wing nine though. So I chose kind of more specific. Okay. I also chose an eight. So yeah. <laughs> everyone she's an eight. <laughs> I feel like we're probably pretty in, in agreement. So like their core fear is being like controlled, manipulated. I feel like that's just Katniss. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I, th- I think it's interesting because there's another character that I put as an eight. And so I split through the different points that I was writing for my notes. And some of them kind of like go over each other, or, but other ones like my other character versus Katniss are very different, but they're in the same group. So some points I put for Katniss were justice is worth fighting for is an ideal that she would have. Mm-hmm. It's hard for me to trust people. I make decisions fast and from the gut. I feel like that's a total Katniss. She just makes them right then um she she says like don't mess with people I love and under my tough exterior is a like loving and caring person so those are the notes I put towards that but in terms of me putting an eight wing nine wing nines are more subtle in their approaches so even though I do see her as an eight and somebody who is like aggressive and wants change and stands up for what they believe in it took her a while to get that voice especially like the first book through Catching Fire. And so, and she always, she has to like kind of be nudged a little bit in the right direction. So I don't think she's like a strong, yeah. sturdy eight. That's why I put eight wing nine. Well, I feel like as she progresses to be being kind of more of a healthy person and growing, mm-hmm. she knowing that it's okay to not always be in control of everything and that people mm-hmm. around you like can care about you and like have good intentions toward you and I should clarify too that the nine is the peacemaker a little bit more I feel like I picture like an eight being somebody like really strong and aggressive and alpha versus a nine is somebody who wants like harmony and peace and I feel like Katniss is kind of like she goes more toward I feel like as the novels progress yeah so I like that I didn't look at the wings I I feel bad I only did for a couple but (laughs) I was mostly looking at I think Enneagram Institute was where I found most Mm -hmm. of like my quotes but just that they're very individual and like independent really more than any other type and they don't really pay attention or like care about what people think of them and I don't know it just made me think of that PETA quote where he says like she has no idea the effect she can have like she doesn't think about that at all Mm -hmm. so that for type eight 
And then they really want to be independent and resist being indebted to anyone. And I was like, oh, that's mm. a huge, huge piece of Katniss's character, I think. Yeah, so, yeah, type eight just seemed to fit, I think, more than anything else. I mean, that's our protagonist. She's got to fight for something. So, <laughs> And I, I feel like it makes sense, like looking at the um, what everyone submitted for different mm-hmm. characters I feel like more than any other character we were really sure as a group about Katniss I'm like I like that because I mean it, it should work that way I think because we know the most about Katniss like we're in her head for three books mm-hmm. yeah so See, that was the thing with so one of the characters I the one character I had the, the hardest time pinning a uh, type down for was Sejanus and so for me, I went through the, the people whole... also had a hard time. <laughs> really? Okay, we'll get to that. But when I did Sejanus, like I had my three picks of what it could be, like what I could see him. But then I, I actually sat down and took the test, uh, like pretending I was Sejanus. Obviously, I, I don't have time that. to do I didn't get these. to that, but <laughs> I was but like, yeah, no, I only Emily, did it for... <laughs> <laughs> But we'll get there. So again, it's easier, like you said, we're in Katniss's mind, but for the rest of them, we're obviously not. So our next character is Peta. if you want to talk about Peta a little bit. See what the people have to say. <laughs> <laughs> for Peta, we had really a tie between two and nine, and then mm. a few people said six as well, but we had eight for two and eight for nine interesting so the helper or or the peacemaker okay so what did what did we choose yeah I never thought about nine for some reason I don't know why that did not cross my brain I picked a solid two for him I picked two also but I feel like I did have some difficulty between two and nine Mm -hmm. when I was going through I I was pairing him more between types two and four because two and four are the emotional um types and um i think this is also from the enneagram institute it says twos tend to move towards others and engage them sometimes excessively whereas fours tend to draw away from others while hoping that others will seek them out so when i was deciding between the two PETA is someone who's more proactive and like goes after relationships with people aka katniss um, Another thing was twos look for people to rescue, whereas fours look for someone to rescue them. So I don't think that Katniss needs rescuing, but she does need help. And I think that he is a caregiver to her in a sense that he provides that help and that love. Yeah, I mean, just like the example of what happened with them with the bread, I feel Mm -hmm. like that that's such a two thing to do. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) I was really thinking like a two. Um, and then twos are very aware of others' feelings, but they tend to be unaware of their own motivations and needs. That was like a little iffy to me. Something interesting though that I did read was that when you look at the picture of the Enneagram, you know how there's like all those arrows connecting the numbers. Mm-hmm. So like it when an arrow points away from a number, so two's arrow outward is what is the person that they turn to when they're stressed out, and two points to eight which is Katniss. So I thought that that was like kind of cute. That was after I decided oh, it was a two. Cool. But, <laughs> um, just some, some traits on why I decided to was that they're caretakers, they're storytellers. They feel drawn into influential people with power, AKA Katniss. And they're more comfortable giving than receiving. And like, when I think of PETA, I think of a giver and a lover mm. and somebody who is artistic, but also values emotions. So that's why I guess I looked more there and not so much as a nine, but I'm curious about yours. For a two, their core fear is like not being needed or like worthy of love. Mm-hmm. And so instantly when I think of yeah. Peta, I'm like, oh, I think of that line where he says, nobody needs me. And like, that's like yeah. something he genuinely, <laughs> I feel like believes mm-hmm. deep down. And so I'm like, that's, that's such a two. And I feel like a lot of the Enneagram types have to do with kind of like early childhood and kind of like trauma and like maybe things that have happened to you. So like why, why is something your core desire or something that you, you fear the most? Mm -hmm. And I feel like with Peta's childhood, he probably felt very 
not valued or, or loved or needed. And so I can see why, as a result of his upbringing, why he would be a two and that would be something he'd be kind of like chasing after. Yeah. It's really sad. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, childhood drama. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a good way of looking at it and I like how we're both looking at different aspects of the type itself and it still all fits <laughs> it works out but I want somebody on here arguing for a nine because to be honest I feel like nines was the type that I learned the least about nines and sevens I was kind of like I still don't fully understand them so I think I mean nines are, are very resistant to conflict and mm. so I guess I can see that with PETA a little bit, but, and, and kind of just like open to what other people want. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like how they show love, I guess. But PETA is so much more like specific in his love. And also he, he's, he's opinionated, mm -hmm. I feel like, whereas nines aren't so... I don't, I don't really see even though it's like the peacemaker I don't think that's like his ultimate like he wants everybody to get along no matter what yeah I don't really see that as his like core desire but I, I'm, I am surprised he got so many votes for a nine so again I'm glad that we get to hear what people have to say I think it could also just be the name like yeah. the peacemaker okay now we're moving on to our final in the original trilogy Mr. Gail Hawthorne Let's pull up those stats. <laughs> <laughs> Over to the chart. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, uh, look at this. So the, the top was the challenger, so type eight. But after that, we also had a few for type one, the reformer, and type three, the achiever. Although there, there's kind of things all across the board. There's at least one yeah. for helper, loyalist, enthusiast. The enthusiast one is funny to me. <laughs> yeah. No, the peacemaker. The fact that there's no peacemaker there, ones. There's, I just think there's silly. no there's no thinking and there's no peace. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing that I think you did make a good point because I mostly learned like I knew about my personal um type, but obviously I have never done this much in-depth research for all the types. So if I were just an audience member seeing this, maybe going by names, I think you can see a lot of bias and like thoughts towards how you view the character with just one word. Like, yeah, he is a loyalist. Yes. Or, or reformer. Yeah, a helper. Like, so I can see that. And I think that that might be why it's kind of skewed all over the place. But it, it, again, it's interesting to see that people thought one, the reformer and three, achiever. Because the one that I picked was eight. I think he the way I described it he's a textbook eight like there's no other no other means mm -hmm. to describe him mm -hmm. and I see Gail as more of like an average kind of eight right in the middle Katniss I feel like it's I like that Katniss and Gail are the same and I mean Katniss mentions how similar the two of them are mm -hmm. but I feel like Katniss does has a lot of growth throughout the series and Gail doesn't as much mm -hmm. and kind of stays where he's at so I, I like that they're both type eight and it, it doesn't mean it's a bad thing I think that's the problem with number eight is just when you read about it you read how aggressive they are and I wanted to make a disclaimer yeah. yeah I wanted to make a disclaimer that at the beginning of this I'm not like I'm going in unbiased like even though I prefer Peta to Gail like, I do not like Gail. I feel like I still care about the, like, integrity of the character. And, like, when I research these, like, it's, like, I'm picking because it's, like, what I genuinely see them as. And so, again, I don't want people to think, like, oh, I don't see him as a helpful character. Like, he does help people. He saves, like, thousands of lives, but, you know, or hundreds of lives. But you know what I mean? It's just, like, Gail is an eight. He, like, this is the one I would sell. This one and Snows, I would be, like, I don't care. I will fight you. I know that he is this number. <laughs> yeah, there was a quote um, about eight that I can read that I had put under Gail. 
-hmm. So they can begin to dominate their environment, including others, want to feel that others are behind them, supporting their efforts, and then want to impose their will and vision on everything, not always seeing others as equals or treating them with respect. Mm, Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that really explains, I feel like, Gil's mindset, especially in Mockingjay, Mm -hmm. when he kind of doesn't care. I mean, war is a very specific situation, too. So, I mean, I can see, like, people's different mindset and, like, how it can be specific to just, like, okay, in this instance of war. But I feel like that just explains his mindset mm-hmm. in Mockingjay. I agree. I, I had written down that last part, too. A couple of other points that I had was um, apes can be wary of people who are super nice. And I just thought of that one situation with Madge. <laughs> <laughs> because he is like he's just he's always looking for some different like truth like he is looking for his truth I guess Mm -hmm. so you can be kind to somebody but you can be kind to Gail but Gail could be like what are the like motives behind this so just what I thought and then everybody's trying to control you (laughs) exactly everyone's out to get this man um another thing is it says I don't have much respect for people who do not stand up for themselves double negative but you have to you have to stand up for yourself and you see gail getting really really irritated with katniss because she chooses to run away and that's not what he sees her doing he Mm. is that's so interesting because if you think about katniss and gail in terms of control like she doesn't want to be controlled so she's going to run away Mm -hmm. whereas like gail doesn't want to be controlled so he's like let's fight the power yeah (laughs) It's just like two different methods to the mm-hmm. same desire that they have. And I don't even know if I would consider Gail like an unhealthy eight is the thing. I just view, like I said, Katniss is eight wing nine, more of a, a peace peacemaker. But Gail is just more of like a right in the middle eight. Yeah, that quote that I read, that's kind of like right in the middle. Like mm-hmm. I was reading the really like unhealthy eights and I was yeah. like, I don't really think Gail is there. He's not like in a really bad place. Yeah. I did like for Katniss, like the most healthy version of an eight, like an eight at their best, it said at their best, they become self-restrained and magnanimous, merciful and foreboding courageous and willing to put themselves in serious jeopardy to achieve their vision and have a lasting influence they may achieve true heroism and historical greatness hmm. yeah Katniss yes <laughs> Katniss Everdeen our queen <laughs> yes so again I think it's just interesting that our three main characters like Katniss Galpita we have two eights and one two and it's funny that we agreed on them <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I can see why maybe two eights don't belong together, you know, mm-hmm. like an eight and a two, they they seem to fit well. But now we're going to move on to our next three characters, which are from the ballad book. Which I, I think these characters are harder <laughs> to place. Except for one. I had the easiest time with Snow. This character was like, I will support this one forever. I had like a hard time with snow. I'm confident in my selection now, but Mm -hmm. I think I just had to kind of think about it a little bit more because I thought he was an eight at first. Mm -hmm. Okay. But let's go to the chart. Let's go to the chart. (laughs) Cue the chart. (laughs) Oh, yeah. This is interesting. This one's hard for me. I'm not going to lie. A lot of people said individualist, number four. Four. And we did have some eights, the challenger, and three, the achiever, and then also the reformer, type one. Yeah. So the most was number four, which when I heard that number four was up here, here's me getting passionate. I am a four. (laughs) I am a four and snow is nothing like me. Like a four is someone who like is deeply, deeply negative about the world around them in a sense that it's like, I'm somebody, I think that I'm different than anyone else. Like I am everything and I, everyone wants to be me. Well, okay, no, I'm describing it. Like, <laughs> I'm not like other like, girls. <laughs> that's pretty much what it is. And it's a lot of it is based in like severe, like sadness or even depression. Like that's what it gets into when you read about fours 
is like the heavy emotional aspect behind it. Mm-hmm. And like to me, snow, it has no emotion. So that's why hearing four <laughs> was a little bit weird for me. I was like, are we really thinking four? But I mean, if if most people thought four, maybe he is a pick me girl like me. Like maybe we are the same. <laughs> but I did not see him as one. I don't see him as a four either. Mm-mm. I don't really understand. But I also feel like I understand four the least. <laughs> really? Just think I, of me. Yeah. Just think of like an anxious, well, see, that helps. overly emotional girl. <laughs> like when I think of four as a character, I think of like Eeyore. Like that's the only character I can really just go, yep, that's it. He is not Winnie the Pooh. Or he's not he's not Eeyore from Winnie Winnie the Pooh. Does Eeyore think he's like really special? Oh, he wants to be. He wants to be special and he's scared that he's not special at all. <laughs> this <laughs> that's is so me. sad. <laughs> so like, Holly, you're so special. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's why I just had a hard time is because fours and twos are very very like there's Mm. no thought there is just heart and and crying and emotions (laughs) (laughs) no get me away from that (laughs) (laughs) so yeah I picked for my snow I picked three that was my my hands down I picked three also you said you started with an eight. I'm really curious. I, about I did the eight. start with an eight, and I feel like if we didn't have Ballad, mm-hmm. he would be an eight. But yeah. when we read Ballad, then it, it's it becomes so much more clear that he really cares about what people think of him and people's <laughs> perception of yes. him. Whereas if we didn't have Ballad, I would just see him as someone who is like all about control. The thing is, he does talk about control a lot in Ballad and how like control is the thing that he loved most about the war. Yeah. And I think there's some other quotes. Ah, there's just several quotes about control, but I think it's a different kind of control. I agree. Yeah. Like ultimately. Because I, I feel like with with an A, it's somebody who is going to voice their opinions all the time. And it's like they wear their heart in their sleeve. Whereas with a three, especially snow falling under that three and the control you're talking about, I think he's able to be more of a chameleon and like work his way through situations. Like he knows what he wants and he knows how he's going to do it. But the only person who's allowed to know his true emotions are himself. Whereas I feel like eights are like, Mm -hmm. they want everyone, they put their like thoughts and emotions onto other people. Yeah. So like more like in control of his emotions. Mm -hmm. Because like in the end, I see Snow, like he obviously he doesn't trust anyone, but he, he uses himself as like, that's his like only like soundboard or friend or whatever is just himself. Whereas I feel like with other types, it's easier for people to just like use other people to talk off of but snow has so many secrets and so many like the way that he wants to appear in society that sort of thing so I don't know I I I can see him being a type three but I agree that's a good point about if we didn't have ballad it'd be different well without ballad I feel like we don't really even know much about snow Mm -hmm. I feel like he isn't really that great of a villain Mm -hmm. without it but I had like these So some of the threes, the type three things I had that stuck out were they're success oriented, um, they're adaptable, excelling, driven, and image conscious, Mm -hmm. which I think is like the number one, because that's all he's concerned about. You learn that how poor he is and how he has absolutely, like he has less than nothing. And so, but he still has his name and like what everybody (laughs) thinks about him. And so he he uses that. He, it's big on image. So some points that I had, which I think they're all very important. One is it is important for me to come across as the winner. I don't like it when people slow me down. Again, he's very independent. I know how to airbrush failures. It looks like success. I keep a close watch on how people are responding to me in the moment. I feel like that's a big one. I'm not someone to talk much about my personal life. And sometimes I feel like a phony, but I refuse to show it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Type three has a fake it till you make it mentality, which is exactly 
the snow lands on top of the holiday. Yeah. So. Well, and also, I mean, I guess that's where I get confused with type eight because snow lands on top. And, like he wants to be in charge, like the most powerful, but like not really. I think it's more he wants the perception that he's on top regardless of whether he really is I think the one thing that helped me decide because yeah I was like three I was pretty set on it but he's an unhealthy level of three yes oh my gosh if you go <laughs> on like I think it was on Enneagram Institute is where they yes. have like the levels uh, and if yeah. you just read the levels from like average to like the most unhealthy it is just snow's progression yes invalid a hundred percent Yes, we were looking at the same thing because some of these notes were like, they can be exploitative and opportunistic. They're willing to do whatever it takes to preserve the illusion of their superiority, betray or sabotage people to triumph over them. They're obsessive about destroying whatever reminds them of their own shortcomings and failure, failures, aka Lucy Gray, aka the gun, border on narcissistic personality disorder, mm. which is the big thing that we talked yeah, about. Yeah, we talked them. about that a lot. So there you yeah. go <laughs> I'm like if anyone is a textbook three it's snow and if anyone's yeah. a textbook eight it's Gail I think that so. convinced me like for more than anything too because type eight if you read the like most unhealthy levels there I just don't really mm-hmm. I don't really see it with snow especially for what we see yeah. in ballad so let's let's check the stats for Miss Lucy Gray <laughs> check in the stats <laughs> so this was interesting. Mm-hmm. The most popular choice was type seven, the enthusiast. The second most popular type was type four, the individualist. And then we also did have a couple four, six, the loyalist, and nine, the peacemaker. I was very interested by this choice of seven. Yes. I, I didn't know much about sevens before. I saw or you told me about the results of this type seven just wants to get the most out of life Mm -hmm. possible they don't want to be deprived of anything and I guess I can kind of (laughs) see that with Lucy Gray a little bit like she's such a free spirit I don't know I don't understand her a lot so I don't know maybe that the four and seven are kind of the least like myself so Mm -hmm. I'm just like yeah she could be a four or seven (laughs) (laughs) either or (laughs) but I don't really see seven Mm -hmm. I agree because when I originally picked hers it was a four and I put her four wing three because that's titled the performer the wing three means that they're more social than other fours and the four wing three's core desire is to express their unique uniqueness in front of big audiences fours like things dramatic or unconventional some people think i'm aloof but i'm really just unique and i'm not like everyone else so lucy gray is not like everyone else yeah she's over here saying well i'm not district yeah exactly (laughs) i'm I'm (laughs) covey that's her mo (laughs) um yeah and i i i agree with you about the seven because i mean i could see points of it that were sevens and i think at the beginning of the episode you brought a a good point how it's not just what the personality traits within the type are it's the values and the the different levels and blah 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 and it's only the points the main points that i feel like fit her at face value as a seven Whereas mm-hmm. fours are very artistic and yeah, like, like I feel like people could see her and think that she is a seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. But when you like get into like the inner workings of someone, then it doesn't really seem to line up as much. I mean, to put it into perspective, Miley Cyrus is a seven, so <laughs> I don't know, just just how I see it. <laughs> Is she really a seven or <laughs> does she just what seem like a seven? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I said four and I think it's interesting because I'm a four and she's a four, but I'm very different from her. Very, very different. So again, it can show you that like, even though you have like similarities with somebody within your type, it doesn't mean that you're at all like the same people, even though you have the like, same values and stuff, so. Shall we move on to your favorite, the last but not least, the love of your life? <laughs> your eyes just light up. You're like, 
<laughs> Mr. Plinth. Oh my god. <laughs> he is he is a dumb boy, but <laughs> that's okay. That's I the still thing. love him. <laughs> He was the character that I had to take this test as, like, role-playing as his character. And I was, like, answering some of these questions, like, do I plan ahead? No. Do I care about repercussions? No. (laughs) Do I plan ahead? Absolutely not. (laughs) Drive snow crazy. (laughs) So, Sid Janus, we've got, this one is just, oh, oh. I feel like all over the place. Yeah. Type 2, the helper. And then the next most popular was one the reformer and nine the peacemaker and then we also had the loyalist so i feel like this is kind of no nobody seems to know (laughs) yeah but the most popular was type two helper which is pita's type and i just don't see that at all you don't see that no i i picked type one the reformer I picked type two. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> but then again, I told you, I don't I don't know him as well. And I don't love his character. I don't understand it as well. So you go first. I feel like he mind. is a really unhealthy type one. Okay. Like, so type ones are the perfectionists. And like, they always want to do the right thing. But I feel like he's really unhealthy in that, like, normally a type one would be seen as very responsible very like self-controlled but they they really have a certain view about the world and how it should be Mm -hmm. and so Janus is he doesn't have a lid on that at all he can be very outspoken and like aggressive and just impulsive so he has like none of that sense of self-control that you see in like a lot of perfectionists okay interesting yeah no I don't don't, (laughs) the thing is I don't see him as a perfectionist so that's why I find type one hard because for me the main trait that I see when I think of him is a helper and somebody who is like PETA I I feel like he's he has such a strong moral compass though Mm -hmm, and that matters more than anything else which Mm -hmm. I feel like is the true type one like that's at their core okay. is to for things to be good and right and like his vision of like what that is mm-hmm. and like other characters in ballad like agree like Lysistrata for example but I don't think she is a type one because like she doesn't really want to do anything about it okay like she's a type two mm-hmm. where she's like trying to actually like help her tribute. <laughs> She but like, I think, has more of that care. Yeah. I think he tries to help the people around him, but he's just so dumb that he's not able to do it. Like he just doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't translate in his head. Because I remember we talked about it a long time ago. So Janus is the combination of Peta and Gale. And I think for me, I see Sejanus as a, an, an eight slash two because it's like, he is so he cares so 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 much about helping helping somebody helping the district people finding balance and peace he cares so much about like justice though and think the world being the right way okay that's true yeah that's true because i when i when i was reading one i i didn't think of it that way but as you described one at the beginning of the episode i can see that so for me, it's just, I see him as needing to help people to a fault, like his desire. Um, that So some notes, I just have a few notes. Um, I said that he was a less healthy too, because the helper, um, are either the most genuinely helpful to other people, or when they are less healthy, they're the most highly invested in seeing themselves as helpful. And I think that's him. Like he see, he, he wants so bad to help. But it's like he's blind to how he can help people. So he thinks but he's I being feel helpful, like an unhealthy but then he leads somebody into an arena and he gets them killed. Trying <laughs> to get the approval and love of others. And like that's why they're so compulsively helpful. Yeah. Okay. That would and make sense. I don't really see that in Sejanus. I think it's more like he's like, this is wrong. Y'all are wrong. Like- <laughs> so would you see him more as like a one wing two then? Because he would be leaning more to like that social change and justice and care Mm, I don't know I'd have to read because the other one so it'd be one wing two Two. or one wing nine 
Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, because he could be either. Probably, because if the wing was nine, I don't think he would be... I feel like that's just, like, more chill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I could see him as, like, a wing, one wing, too, if that's what that would mean. Let me look. I was reading, okay, like, the personal growth recommendations for Enneagram Type 1, and, like, some of the quotes are, learn to relax, <laughs> remember that the salvation of the world does not depend on you, Oh, that's a big one. Don't expect other people to change immediately. And Mm. what's obvious to you might not be as obvious to them. Your words and above all, your example will do more good than you realize and have patience. Okay, you sold me on this. You sold me on this. That's (laughs) Janus. Yeah, you sold me. Your Achilles heel is your self-righteous anger. You get angry easily and are offended by what seems to you to be the profuse refusal of others to do the right thing as you have defined it try to step back and see that your anger will alienate people so that they cannot hear many of the good things that you have to say i can see that also i read up on the relationship between a type three and a type one stop i hate you i hate you because you know i love the uh relationship between Uh sejanus and snow Oh. <laughs> and it said there can be a creeping sense of competition. Ooh. The relationship can be too concerned with image and with reputations rather than with principle. Ones can see threes, so Sejanus can see snow as tending to cut corners in ethical matters, willing to exaggerate or fudge the truth in order to achieve whatever they are after. Okay, I think you're the new expert, to be honest. Like, <laughs> you told me. I, I care about Sejanus the most. I know, but I, I like. get it. I get it. And then ones may also have issues with threes attempting to reinterpret ethical questions and with not owning up to their own personal behavior, including their behavior regarding fidelity in the relationship itself. So- <laughs> Rip. <laughs> Just ma. Ma, ma. No, <laughs> I cannot. Yeah. Okay. You sold me on that. That Again, I, he was the one I did not feel comfortable with. So you okay, got Lucy Gray. I've got Sejanus. Exactly. It's we got it. each other. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm glad that we narrowed it down to six to do for this episode. Because remember when we tried to do all 50 of them? <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, that was too many. So, I mean, if you guys Health, want us growth. to... <laughs> growth. <laughs> <laughs> if you want us to do more characters like Hamish, Finnick, Epi, or more from Ballad as well, we can do a part two. Absolutely. We would love to. We love our personality tests. <laughs> yeah, and now I'm like, what's what's the next personality test we have to do, like, down the line in another 40 episodes? <laughs> I mean, I feel like you know more about, like, astrology and, like, Ooh, the different, yes. different signs. Don't I don't know started. anything about that, so I will really have to <laughs> dig in deep. <laughs> it'll it'll be like a big homework session for you. <laughs> it'll, it'll have to be. I love that. Yeah. So we'll do some more in the future. I don't, like, we didn't mean for this to take 40 episodes to do another one, but it's just like, we we have a lot to talk about here. We do. And we try to, I mean, mix it up. Yes. With different topics. So. so hopefully this episode is better than episode two, because this is a tangent, but I hate how our most listen slash watch episode is obviously number one, because number we've one done. Number two. <laughs> We're so different now. <laughs> So this is our new number two, where we feel like we understand each other a little more. We understand how to do a podcast a little bit more, maybe. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, so thank you. For those of you who have been here since episode two, thank you very much for staying. If you didn't get to participate on our Instagram stories, make sure that you tell us what you think about the characters on this episode and where you think their typings would fall we'll see you in a couple weeks for our next episode but join us tomorrow we should probably celebrate the start of ballad filming at tribute talk yeah yeah (laughs) we're definitely gonna be celebrating yeah and so join us then and see you next time